What's up everybody? So we get a lot of questions about how do we paint our rifles and what do we use, what kind of paints, what kind of materials, you know, multiple questions. So what we're going to do today is we're going to literally walk you through on how we paint our rifles and what we use and sometimes it's not all the same stuff. So, you know, sometimes we use laundry bags, sometimes we just use grass, leaves, paper, cardboard, whatever we want. But the general idea for us on why we paint our rifles is we like to, one, look badass because that's a whole portion of it. And second, it gives it what kind of environment we're in. We're here in Arkansas, so it's a lot of green during the summers. And then it's a lot of browns and a lot of darks in the fall. And then, of course, sometimes in the winter, it's pure white. So going into that, we're in the summer, kind of creeping into the fall. So we're going to just go with our summer colors and go with that. Um, so we use Krylons, which is going to be the spray paints we use. So we kind of vary, but we use the Krylon camouflages. And then we just hit it with some Rust-Oleum on the blacks. And then as well as the camouflage on the greens. And then also in that, um, we hit it with a matte clear at the end of it. We do on some and we do on uh, not all the time but it just kind of depends on what we're doing. The mat, don't freak out on the price of it or anything. You don't have to use it. It just kind of helps preserve it for a little while longer than what if you just spray painted it and didn't use the mat. That's all that is. So for today, we're going to be using just some blades of grass put together. Um, rather do that as kind of to disrupt the solid color and change it and put it into the other colors. So what we're going to be painting today is the SCAR 16. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape this. It is clear, just for all you guys. So we're going to tape it and we're going to pick what we want to paint and what we don't want to paint. So for me, I'm not going to paint my D-ball. I'm going to just take it off, um, set it to the side, and I'm not going to paint the suppressor. You can paint them, but... I'm just not into it because it's just going to melt off anyways. So I don't want to paint my sling, so I'm going to take that off. Now that the sling's off, I pretty much have everything that how I want to paint it. So you can leave a mag in there. This is just a Lancer 20 round mag that I'll never use. Um, or you can simply just take your scotch tape and you can cover the magazine well. Or you can just put a mag in there and not worry about it. It's totally up to you. I'd just rather not try and fight it and my tape fall off. So some of the components that I'm going to tape on here is it doesn't have to be pretty. You don't have to, you know, freak out and go crazy. I'm just going to put some tape on the safety so that way nothing, nothing gets in there. It doesn't have to be perfect and you don't have to tape it perfect. If you are just meticulous, that's fine. But if you do it enough and paint enough rifles, you'll get out of that. I'm going to paint the, I'm going to tape the trigger. I want that to stay as smooth as possible. You can take the whole gun apart if you want and then tape it. But that's a lot of time and, you know, I don't really care. So take the trigger just wrap it around there like I said it doesn't have to be neat pretty and then I'm going to tape the muzzle device I'm going to tape it back to where the shims are just wrap it around and then I'm going to make sure that no paint gets in there In the end I just covered the whole thing just to be on the safe side you can do it how you like tape that and for me probably wouldn't hurt anything but I'm just gonna run some tape around my charging handle probably wouldn't hurt anything but I just would rather leave it black and then 
I'm gonna cut my tape in half and just run it down this into my bolt so nothing gets in there. So like I said, it probably wouldn't hurt anything right there, but. So now that that's taped, that side is complete for me. Now I'm gonna flip it over to the other side and do the exact same thing with the safety and the bolt. And then I'm also going to cover up the ejection port just to be on the safe side. And we are painting the optic, so we're just gonna put some tape on the glass, make sure it's good to go. Now I do fold the tape and I make sure that there's no air pocket in there. And so it's kind of the same with the light. You're gonna take it and just put it on the glass and then press it down pretty solid. I just let it dangle like that. So that way any excess paint will just hit the tape. We're painting the mod light. So we're just gonna run some tape across the back here because I, I kind of want my buttons to stay non-painted. And then just covering up the front glass. And then we'll cover up the side adjustments. And that covers up the taping section of what it is we tape on our rifles. So it's pretty minimal, not a whole lot. Um, may look like a lot, but the scar really doesn't have a whole lot of pieces that need to be covered. So you can be the guy to leave the serial numbers and what model it is untaped or, or taped and paint them. It's completely up to you. I'm just gonna paint over it. So like I said, I'm using blades of grass on this. And so what this will do is obviously the scars come in the FDE or solid black. So we're gonna hit it with uh, all green. So this is actually deep forest green Rust-Oleum camouflage paint. And we're gonna just hit it all the way over and then we'll come back and disrupt it with some other colors. Now we kind of let that sit and dry and then we'll flip it over and do the exact same thing. So something to keep in mind as well when you're painting your rifle is the butt stocks. If they're in or out, you may want to bring it out all the way. I'm not too worried about it, so I'm just going to leave it as set up for me and continue painting the underneath. Then we'll flip it on its other side and we'll hit it again. Then we'll set it up. And now that's what it looks like in the complete base coat of the dark, dark forest green. That's the Rust-Oleum. So now what we'll do is we'll kind of move into disrupting that color and adding in some back some tan and then some dark brown. So we'll probably start with the dark brown to really kind of hit it. So the pattern is completely up to you, however you want to do it. Like I said, I'm using just six pieces of grass, seven pieces of grass taped together. So it'll kind of just lay it on there how you want. And once the paint gets on there, it'll really, really hit it.
And the great thing about using grass is you can take the grass and you can feed it through any wires or anything like that. So that way it really lays on there and you get a good solid coat. And you can kind of see it's creating, you know, Call of Duty Tiger Stripe. But what we want to do is make sure that we get the underneath as well. So then we'll flip it back over and just keep going. Something that you definitely want to do is when you're doing this is you want to be sure and pick the leaves up off the rifle. Just pick them up so that way it doesn't smear your paint as it comes across. So now that I've created some sort of disruption, it's pretty dark, so now I'm gonna lighten it up and that's where the tan comes in. Cause I'm gonna try and take as much paint off as I can of these leaves. And then I'm gonna take the uh, Krylon camouflage, this is the camouflage khaki. I'm gonna take it and I'm just gonna do the exact same thing just with a different color. Sometimes you have to shake the leaves, get them to break apart. And then you can just kind of take it and give it some dabs where you need it. And it would be a bad idea to have a second set. You can definitely use more than one set of grass. I just, I'm gonna just use one and deal with it. kind of to your likings what you see and then once you're done with that you'll just move over now I like to go back and add a little bit more dark after hitting it with the light so that's where the rust-oleum flat black is going to come in and I'm going to kind of change it up and use a little bit thicker leaves so then we'll flip it back over now the black's not what you want to get super crazy with but you can just take one of those leaves and kind of can run some stripes through it and then it kind of puts the black and kind of really see it once it kind of dries now as far as the black goes it's it's depending on how much you want to use I don't use a whole lot just enough to so you can kind of see the disruption in the colors and then we'll let that completely dry before we put the clear coat on. And then once we put the clear coat on, we'll untape it and it'll be ready to go. So now that it's completely dry, I'm gonna come back with the matte clear because I kinda want this coat to last me a little bit longer than the normal. So I'm just gonna spray it completely with the clear coat and at first it's gonna look super shiny. Um, but then once it dries, it'll, it won't have that shiny effect to it. And then once you have the clear coat on, you let it completely dry before taking any tape off or anything like that in case you see some spots that you wanna to touch up. Um, and then from there, your rifle will, will pretty much be complete. We'll take it apart, take all the tape off and put it together. So as you can see, the rifle has been painted, it's good to go and it's ready to get shot. The clear coat, like I said, once it dries, it won't be near as shiny and it's completely dried some spots um, you know you'll you'll see that you'll miss some spots but it's really how OCD you want to get about it we are not that OCD um, so we just give them a good paint and then we move on about our day so if you guys have any questions put it in the comments uh, definitely like and subscribe to our channel and anything mentioned in this full disclosure it's all on us we're not sponsored by Krylon or anybody like that Pick it up at Lowe's or Home Depot or Walmart 
and get to painting. Thanks, guys.